السلام عليك يا يا رسول الله السلام عليك يا حبيبي يا نبي الله يا رسول الله الحمد لله الحمد لله وكفى وسلام على عباده الذين اصطفى خصوصا على اشرف الانبياء والمرسلين وعلى اله واصحابه وازواجه وذرياته اجمعين اما بعد فاعوذ بالله من الشيطان الرجيم بسم الله الرحمن الرحيم ورفعنا لك ذكرك وقال الله تعالى في شان حبيبه مخبرا وامرا ان الله وملائكته يصلون على النبي يا ايها الذين امنوا صلوا عليه وسلموا تسليما اللهم صل على سيدنا ومولانا محمد معدن الجود والكرم واله وبارك وسلم وصل عليه حضرت مولانا سلمان صاحب Mawlana Khairul Huda and our Mayor of Oldham, Brother Javed Iqbal and Councillor Abdul Malik and all of my wonderful audience here and children. Assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh. Mawlana asked me to talk about why do we celebrate Miladun Nabi. I don't want to talk about that. No, I don't want to talk about that. Let us talk about something else. Azad Abu Yazid Bastami, Rahmatullah Ta'ala, he says that the highest status and the rank that an ordinary believer can achieve and attain is the beginning and the first stage of the Wali of Allah. And where the high status the wali can achieve is the beginning of the status of a shaheed of a martyr and where the highest rank of the martyr ends that marks the beginning of the place of a siddiq and where the high station of a siddiq ends marks the beginning of the station of a nabi of a prophet of god and where the high status rasul is given marks the beginning of the status of the rusul of the rasuls and where that ends it marks the beginning of the high state station that the ulul azm prophets the four ulul azm prophets who are those four ulul azm prophets and would like to tell me come on no ibrahim Musa and Isa. Where their status ends marks the beginning of the status of Muhammad Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. وَرَفَعْنَا لَكَ الذِّكْرَكَ What does Allah say? We raise the station, the rank, the fame of Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. Who's saying that? The Lord of the universe. the creator, the absolute controller, the inventor of this vast universe, the king of all kings, the master of all those who claim to have any kind of power. That is Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and he says, وَرَفَعْنَا لَكَ ذِكْرَكَ Dhikr actually means, it, it means many things, but one of them is actually the fame, the fame rank the station the status ya muhammad we raised your status we raised your fame can anybody measure how far allah could raise someone's status could we measure it could you could anybody measure that no nobody can and it is actually something that is and this is one of why one of the points said balagh al-ula bi kamalihi balagh al-ula 
one of the mashallah our young uh, brothers was reciting that uh, that wonderful chorus balaghal ula bi kamalihi kashafat duja bi jamalihi you know balaghal ula you know what that means it means that he has reached the highest station ula he's reached the how just like that just because you know he's been favored no bi kamalihi be because of his kamal because of his kamal. kamal means perfection allah made him perfect allah gave him those beautiful qualities characteristics which really made him the best and the perfect so he says he's not just become ala which allah has made him just like that because of his kamal because of his you know this is something which the there's Quran is actually teaching us something very important and fundamental you never achieve greatness you never achieve success without having something in you so don't think you know i can become great i can become i can have this or that just by having a wish w wishes are not good enough you have to actually strive and struggle what do you have to do you know this is really sad you know what has happened with the muslims and believers of muhammad sallallahu alaihi wasallam we have now, now adopted a fatalistic attitude we believe that things will just happen but you know when it comes to your restaurant and takeaway you don't you don't have that attitude it's only with when it's to do with deen when it's to do with islam when it's to do with your worship when it's to do with the service to humanity you think oh it will just happen but when it comes to your shop do you take that attitude you wouldn't succeed would you you know it's wrong this is the wrong attitude and you know the quran keeps on telling us you know when it talks about the people of jahannam it says bima kanu yaksibu this is because what you earned you did this and when it comes to the people of jannah it says lahum ajrun ghayr mamnun for them is a never ending reward but why because they earned it my dear brothers you know this has always been particularly you know the people who are religious somehow you know we've got into this weird notion that allah will just bless us <laughs> allah is not just going to bless us eh he's going to bless us when we take the step towards him when we move towards him when we want him he will then he will then want us but you have to take the step first okay so when he says balagh al ula bi kamalihi kashafa tuja bi jamalihi then he goes on to say that you know the darkness darknesses were removed by his jamal by his what is the jamal of muhammad sallallahu alaihi wasallam what is the jamal of course it means the beauty rasulullah was absolutely beautiful so beautiful that one of the sahabis he says it was a 14th of the moon the moon full moon was sh was shining in the sky and he was sitting with other sahaba with rasulullah sallallahu alaihi wasallam and he says i looked at rasulullah i looked at the moon i looked at siddiq I looked at the moon. I looked at Rasulullah. I looked at the moon. But I found that the Rasul's face was brighter than the moon. You know, and that is the Jamal of Rasulullah. He was so shining. You know, he's and 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 uh, the, the the poet goes on to say that balagh al ula bi kamalihi kashaf al duja. the darkness has disappeared because of his jamal i want you to understand what the jamal is you know remember we know rasulullah was very beautiful so beautiful that imam tirmizi collected just the physical features of rasulullah he collected a hadith about the physical features of rasulullah he looked at the eyes of rasulullah a hadith about the eyes of rasulullah a hadith about the beautiful nose of rasulullah about the face of rasulullah about his dark black curly locks 
He talked about the sweat of Rasulullah, how it beautifully smelt, okay? And the shifa in it. So that is called the shamail of Rasul, okay? Yes, we believe he was beautiful. But you know, the jamal here doesn't just refer to the beauty of the face or the beauty of the physical body of Rasulullah. It refers to something more fundamental. He himself talked about it when he said, The only reason I have been sent is to perfect character, is to make human character the best, is to make people's values, morals good, is to put in them the sense of kindness is to make them patient, is to make them generous, is to make them resilient so they can face the difficulties of life patiently, so they can be strong and they can face the sufferings and the turmoils and whatever life throws at them. That was the mission of Muhammad Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam. So when we talk about the Jamal, you know, don't become superficial. It's very sad, you know, because our poets actually talk a lot about the Jamal of Rasulullah. But I'm sure they don't actually just mean the physical beauty. All right. They're actually saying, look at the akhlaq of Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. And when they say, look at the akhlaq of Rasulullah, what are they saying to you and me? They're saying, follow that beautiful model, uswatun hasana, that beautiful role. Follow it so that... You see, after all, Rasulullah came to give us something. What did he come to give us? And, you know, I said to you, I don't want to talk about Milad. I want to talk about Sahibi Milad. Just look at how wonderful and beautiful he is. And then you can ask yourself this question. Do we need to celebrate him or not? I'll leave that for you, okay? I'll leave that for intelligent people to think. That when you have such a wonderful leader, when you have such a great personality, when you have such a beautiful role model, perfect role model, the beloved of Allah, as somebody who cares for you, who's showing you the way, then it's up to you to whether you want to celebrate and be happy in having him. That's your choice, okay? And, you know, I'd leave that. So I don't think there's much to say about that. So let's carry on what the poet says. He says, Kashafad doja bi jamalihi, hasunat jami o khasalihi. All his qualities are what? Jami, all of them are hasunat, absolutely beautiful. You know his khasail? I've just told you about the shamail of Rasulullah, his beautiful eyes, and his beautiful broad chest, and his beautiful smell. But his khasail are what we really need today as well. You know, if you want to become a successful person, a strong person, how do you become that? Very simple way. Follow Muhammad Rasulullah. He's your uswatun hasana. Now this isn't a, you know, I'm not talking just somebody who believes and this is my confession and my conviction and my faith. As a scientist, Wallah, what Rasulullah gave to humanity is what we need. And the Quran says, An-Nabiyyu awla bil mu'mineen. An-Nabiyyu awla bil mu'mineen. The messenger is closer to you than yourselves. What that means, if you were to translate that, it very simply means, Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam cares more for you than you do. He cares, An-Nabiyyu awla, he cares more for you than you know, you would say, no, I'm always protecting myself. I want my survival. I am very selfish about myself. You say that, don't you? But to be honest, you know, who makes you do the wrong things? Tell me. When you go off the path, eh? when you do that cheating, when you do that little fraud, when you lie, when you eat the wrong food, the wrong drinks, you spend your time in different ways. Who's doing that? Is that somebody outside? Who is doing that? Who is it? It's your ego. It's your... It comes from yourself, your nafs. Isn't that right? It's your nafs that's... So what do we have inside us? Is an enemy. The nafs. The self. What is in English we call the ego. That ego is destructive. It destroys humanity. 
and Rasul Allah says to us believers love him love Rasulullah love him and what will happen you will be able to suppress and you'll be able to control your nafs and you will be able to therefore prevent yourself from harming yourself so when, when we say that and the Quran goes on to tell us you know that that is also telling us his wives are your mothers meaning he is your spiritual father what is Rasulullah? I'm just going to finish in a minute uh, Rasulullah is our spiritual father and his wives are our spiritual the Quran tells us that doesn't it eh? he is spiritual father now it's up to you whether you want to celebrate such a great spiritual father eh? such a great master and the Quran also says this is the Rahma of Allah. This is the Rahma of Allah, the kindness of Allah. This is the father of Allah. What is it? The grace of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala on you. Now you should rejoice. And let me end with this beautiful Sheikh Sadi Shirazi was also contemplating how to show his love for Rasulullah. Just like you want to express your love through your milad, eh? he says, Ya sahib al jamal, ya sayyid al bashar. Ya sahib al jamal, ya. O oh, most beautiful, O oh, most leader of mankind. Ya sahib al jamal, ya sayyid al bashar. Min wajhik al munir lakad nuvir al kamar. Your face has actually brightened the moon. The moon doesn't shine without your light that's what he's saying effectively and he's sirajam munira the shining sun the quran describes the prophet as, as sirajam the shining sun that is muhammad rasulullah he says and he says min wajhikal munir lakad nuvir al kamar and then he goes on to say that you know all i can say la yumkinu sana kama kana haqquhu ba'd az khuda buzurg tui qissa mukhtasar you know, it's not possible to praise you as you deserve to be praised. You know, even a poet as eloquent and effective and as impressive of, as Sheikh Sadi says, my pen doesn't have the power to describe your beauty, Ya Rasulullah. Hey? Nobody can. It is so beautiful, so wonderful. Now it's up to us now. But, you know, let me end with a rational and a reasoned argument why we need to follow Rasulullah why you need him today you know people ask that was 1400 years ago does he have relevance today my dear brothers he has even more relevance today than ever before why because we live in a very foggy world what did I say you know up, up here in Oldham and Manchester it's all it's foggy during these days and nights isn't it You've dri driven on M62 in a fog, it becomes very dangerous. Wallah, there is no doubt. We live now in a foggy world. The foggy world of, of the materialism, capitalism, and absolutely absurd sexuality. Human values have gone berserk. Okay? In fact, we have lost it. Look at the polarization and hatred that is being preached from the top offices of the most civilized, so-called civilized countries now. It's a challenge for us. The whole humanity is now suffering, really. This is the fog, the darkness, where we can't actually see the beautiful face of humanity. We can't see the beautiful face of? It's all vague now, it's all dark. That is why you need Muhammad Rasulullah's torch. You need the nur of Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. And finally, you know, we need those beautiful characteristics. No one in the world is teaching you to be patient. No one is telling you to be generous. Give freely of your time, of your wealth for the welfare of others. Who tells you that? Eh? It is only Muhammad Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. And of course, you know, the, those who are the deputies like Hazrat Peer Abdul Latif Fultali radiallahu ta'ala an, like Peer Imad al -Din, and of course, here you know you have their representative, Allama Salman. You know, may Allah give him long life and courage, strength, energy to carry on. And people like Mawlana Khairul Huda and all of these brothers, 
they are following in the footsteps of those in order to spread that light of Muhammad sallallahu alaihi wasallam. So it's really wonderful to see all of you wanting to express that love. You know, may Allah subhanahu wa taala help us to appreciate, value, and really begin to see that you know we really, honestly, we have the best. Can you imagine a society whose twenty percent of whose children? under the age of 11 are depressed that is here last week's figures showed that one out of five primary age children are suffering from you know that just shows you how needy people are of muhammad rasulullah eh? and these people have the light through Muhammad sallallahu alaihi wasallam to spread that we should be very proud may allah subhanahu wa ta'ala bless you all on this great occasion of miladun nabi wa akhiru da'wana an alhamdulillahi rabbil alamin and as i finally stood there before you i couldn't stop my tears from falling in your presence oh muhammad assalamu alayka ya ya rasul allah as